Welcome to Spaces Between. This is a podcast about getting to know gamers and getting closer with other gamers where I interview different guests from the Dice Tower and from the board game industry. I'm your host, Roy Candy, and with me today is Randy and Ellen. Hey, y'all. I'm the Randy. I'm Ellen. <laughs> oh, nice. And I even got the nameplate set up in the right place. That's that's perfect. Oh, there you go. I had that set up before you guys even set, and I knew that Randy was going to oh be on the right. Oh, my gosh. Was you did a really good job. You're there so you go. good at name guessing. <laughs> awesome. Well, I uh, I uh this is our second episode of the podcast. Um, I had Mike Delisi on last week, and that's actually up on the Dice Tower YouTube channel now, which is super exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, And this is going to be up on the Dice Tower YouTube the following Monday. Um, and then it'll be live again that Monday night. So, uh, so super excited to have y'all on. We are so excited to be here, Roy. This is awesome. I've been thinking about this a lot. So thank you. (laughs) I've been thinking about it less so, but I'm just as excited. (laughs) Randy's like, I got work and stuff to do. (laughs) I'm like, I just sit here eating bonbons all day. So (laughs) joke. Yeah. You don't do anything during the day. Yeah. Right. Right. Just like like yoga hours on on that. Just like yoga, that's literally all I do. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so um, I know you guys just recently, you came back from Gen Con, it was your first Gen Con, and y'all just did a Gen Con vlog as well. We did. He did. Well, no, we you did this, 97% I, I did of the work. Thing, yeah. Well, yeah, Took I think I, like I did a little bit of the like maneuvering of the camera over there, but I'm mm-hmm. so not used to that. It's, yeah. it's very stable, but... There's actually a, clip, a series of clips that I left in of Ellen attempting like four like times to, yeah, I couldn't, to use I couldn't the camera properly. <laughs> uh, actually, bad. that's going up on the Dice Tower channel now. I actually pulled it off of our YouTube channel um, Yeah. because Tom's going to actually put it on the Dice Tower channel apparently. That's awesome. Did he like reach out to you yeah. about it? or? Uh, I I said, oh, do you, would you want this or yeah, whatever? I said, oh, him. sure. Come on, Roy. Um, you know, that's you know, awesome, you know, Tom, though. Tom's not like... Sounds not like super ecstatic about anything. <laughs> it's seemingly sometimes. <laughs> it's funny because I saw it and I was like, "This should be on our channel." Is that weird? And now well, it's I gonna know. be. Well, I, so, I, I just so I pulled it off of ours because you know because um, obviously it's kind of a sure almost an exclusive thing for for Dice Tower. So I just pulled it off and then and then I, I have watched that video posted. that he made like five <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah. Because it was so fun. It was fun. Oh to my make, gosh, yeah. the mm-hmm. memories. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it was so it was probably like, it took me like the entire day, but like there was like a maybe three ish hours of it mm-hmm. that was just yeah problems and issues that came up that I was figuring out because I had you know I've done editing on Premiere plenty of times, mm-hmm. but um, I hadn't done anything real, you know, not advanced but like more Fancy. more than basic I guess you know with with mm-hmm. just. With a review, it's just kind of like use like basically three clips, a couple overlays, and you're right. you know done. And I was doing some trying to do some speed effects and mm-hmm. you know various things and speeding stuff up and cleaning audio up and support. things. So yeah, vlogs so are a completely some, different animal. So yeah, for sure. But honestly, I prefer doing those. I like I have a lot of fun doing that. They're definitely a lot more creative because you know like when you have a review yeah. or when you have of course like your board game breakfast segment, it's like you have a formula and it's done. Right. Yeah. Like a vlog right. could be almost different every single time. Exactly. And when you get into that like mindset of like, okay, well, how should I, I really like the like creative or like artsy style vlogs where you're like, all right, let, let's do this yeah. crazy time lapse of this thing or that thing. And like you yeah. set up the yeah. shot and like get it all, all good. I did a right. couple of vlogs on like my channel, like forever ago that were like literally just me in my garage and then coming up with things to do. Oh, like sure, I pretended, yeah. <laughs> I pretended <laughs> to pick up a package off the front, front porch and like literally it had me opening the door and like getting a package, but which sure. which looks cool in the vlog. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. then you come to the realization that Roy went outside and set up a tripod. Totally. With the package. I watched. Right. I watched a guy's uh, Gen Con video today also, and there was a shot where he's leaving. He's like, he's it's just showing that he's done, and it's him leaving the hotel room, and the hotel room like sh- shuts behind him, and the camera you know is just sitting there on the floor in the hotel room, so you have to like, go back in and like get it, turn right. it off. And I just like Survivor funny. Man, you know, yeah, like, everybody right. goes gets like set the camera up and then walk away. But Randy and, and I are also like photographers too, so when we were walking along mm-hmm. into Gen Con, we were just noticing little pockets and areas that went, oh, that'd be really cool to get. That's interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. That's you know aesthetically pleasing, whatever. Yeah. So. It was so fun to be kind of artistic in and that way. It is way. quite different. Video and photos. Well, is yeah, quite I'm not comparing yeah, yeah. the two. I mean, oh, no, artistically. Yeah. But like after we finished the video, we watched it back. Like, oh, we should really, mm-hmm. you know, do some better like, intros first. and things like that, mm-hmm. and 
in quick snippets, you know, here and there. So, so fun. we've got some ideas for next time. We'll see. Do you now like when you consume content or like watch it, like be like, oh, this is how they edited that, or like, oh, think about like right totally. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. I do that I think, even for photography. Like when I look at other weddings, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what's going on there. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what they're doing in that shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, like, you would think, oh, that's a really nice shot, but you're sitting there thinking about, like, the angle that the photographer yeah. had to get to to get that shot. Like, yeah. somebody is, is laying that, on the ground. Like, she Somebody's was on, on the, the ground. On, this one. on the ground, yes. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, we'll do some shots like that. I have this one shot that I particularly do where I'm on my back laying down and I shoot, like, up to the sky. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the guys, the guys are like around me, around. like, with yeah. whatever drinks or whatever they're in hand, like, a cheers in the middle and, and looking down. <laughs> but I always have to, like, walk the guys through it, like, Step so, like, by you're getting step. on the ground? Like, so, what? Now, listen, hear me out. I'm going to get on the ground. <laughs> this is going to sound real and weird. And then we're going to do this. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, they just, like, they just, they'll rag It's you so funny because, like, people see those photos and they're like, oh, that's a really cool photo. Or you see that photo. Right. It's like, right. oh, that's really cool and that's awesome. And then it's like, you know, the awkwardness of, like, uh-huh. having to set that shot up. Oh, yeah. Mm, oh, yeah I'll tell you, nothing sure. makes you go out of your comfort zone, like, photographing a wedding. Like, you have to command. Uh huh. Every everybody, everyone looks at you to like, what's going on? What's the schedule? What do we do here? And then you're trying to like keep track of everything and be artistic at the same time. And like, it's a big deal. So, anyways, I say all that to say we kind of when we were taking video at Gen Con, we're kind of looking out for just cool angles and whatever. Yeah, it was fun for sure. <laughs> How do you think like all of that stuff carries over into like your board game media stuff that you guys have been doing? Um, the pictures and stuff for sure. Like Ellen yeah. starts posting like on an Instagram post that we do, she'll post like three or four or five pictures or mm-hmm. something. And we don't get like super crazy artistic with those yeah. just because we're trying to just kind of like in the moment kind of a shot. Mm-hmm. We don't like set anything up like super crazy. Sometimes like they'll some swipe people and do. put it on a portrait mode. So that's pretty fancy. Oh, I actually don't use like our nice camera. <laughs> I don't use like our nice camera for any of the stuff that I post on yeah. Instagram. Because I'm in the moment, like I'm having fun, I just want to get a picture of what's up. happening. But. And it's so much easier to, like, just send it straight from, like, an iPhone to the so, social media. Yeah. Oh, so mm-hmm. much easier. Even with, like, my yoga stuff, I would love to, like, get artsy-fartsy and, like, get beautiful shots and things like that. But I'm like, it's so much work, though. And then yeah. I have to, like, mm. edit it and upload it. And, uh, I don't know. I'm <laughs> lazy. I'm la- Basically, what I'm saying is I'm super lazy, We're everybody. a little lazy sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, my old Especially... phone, I used to, like, take the pictures off my camera and, like, mm. like send it over to my phone and make sure I had it all there so that way I could upload it to Instagram. And then, yeah. like, I got a new phone, and I'm like, this camera and this is just as good as my DSLR. Mm. Like, why am I even doing yeah. all that work, you know? Yeah, exactly. Especially when it's just going to be on, like, consumed on the screen anyway, mm-hmm. like on a, right. on a phone. Yeah. So it's not like we have to get, like, you know, our 30 megapixel camera out with, mm-hmm. you know, full frame and, and do the whole nine with this awesome thing. With, when somebody's just kind of scrolling through it, literally, and right, going to see right. your picture for about three seconds. Right. You know, it's like, it's mm-hmm. not really worth it. <laughs> That's still pretty cool. So uh, how did y'all get into, like, wanting to do, like, stuff with the Dice Tower and stuff on board game media and things like that? Like, what sparked your interest for that sort of thing? It was actually almost all Ellen. That's awesome. (laughs) It was was quite by accident. Like, there's so much backstory, Roy. It's ridiculous. Randy's been trying to get me to game forever, and I would not. That's that's a story in itself. But I just, and so finally I did. Now here we are. And once I started, like, oh, my gosh, this is actually really fun. I want to share this moment with people. And I know that a lot of people out there, I actually have, like, a handful of specific people that, like, kind of mock me when I post selfies and whatever. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. do it anyways. It's they mock fun. me when I post I selfies, too, so it's fun. Yeah, whatever. I just <laughs> care. It's fun. And you know what? Actually, like, at the time I started doing selfies to now, it's kind of become, like, a fun thing that they yeah. kind of poke fun at me. It's not even, like... But anyways, I just started posting selfies because I was thinking when I, as a new gamer, <laughs> scroll through and I just see game, 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 game. I don't I don't know what that is. It's cool looking, but I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But then when you see a room with people, like, with their faces lit up and they're mm-hmm. laughing and it's, like, you're seeing the vibe of the room on a camera. That's what I like to see. So I was like, what yeah, would I like to sure. see if I was scrolling through Dice Tower or whatever? And so I just started getting the phone out and taking pictures of who's there and like it's memories, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's special and it's like gaming is a bonding experience and I like to capture that and post it. So quite by accident, my selfies became like 
a thing. I don't know. Mm. I don't know why, but like now here we are. People but then you like, always get like occasional yeah. people coming on and say, oh, you guys should do reviews. It's yeah, like, we you know, did. Yeah. I think everybody pretty much gets that at some point sure. in time here and there. Yeah. So we're like, ah, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, no I don't want to get do any it. Of that no, stuff. And, no. And then, I don't know, we just kind of, you brought it up about, you know, sending a video to Tom for board game breakfast. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah, well, you know, maybe we'll try to submit like, something. Like, we need one more thing on our plates. Like, we're not yeah. busy enough. That's true. <laughs> Let's contact Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so then Tom, you know, picked us up or whatever and mm-hmm. just been trying to try to get better ever since. And mm-hmm. I think we've improved here and there. And yeah. So. Yeah, mostly we just want to be consistent. Like, I want people to... I want to always have something on um, the board game breakfast, mm-hmm. you know, and not skip. There, there has been time. I mean, life gets crazy, mm-hmm. and sometimes yeah. we just have to miss weeks. Like it is what it is. Yeah, I got, sure. I got myself a family. I got myself children. I got to watch out for. Right, right. But um, <laughs> you know, we try to be consistent, if anything. So, mm-hmm. but that's kind of how it took off, just super randomly. It was not intentional yeah. at all. So, no, not at all. The fact I that we're sitting here talking to you full screen. I think that's one of the big things with like anything in general. It's like if you're consistent <laughs> and keep pushing at it and keep sure. doing it like yep. you'll find success and making it happen you'll just grow yep. and get better at it as you go along which is really cool um, just yeah. like yoga just like yoga roy you become more flexible <laughs> over time i guess i don't know <laughs> no. so, so there's this moment there's i know uh y'all have pictures of it or whatever and it's in y'all's uh vlog which is going to be on the dice tower soon um I, which you yeah. need to check out uh but there's this like this scene that me and tom walked into it's like all these dice tower contributors <laughs> just right. doing yoga with ellen <laughs> in this one room and the I, side oh room of the hotel. I, I saw y'all in there and i'm like tom i think they're doing yoga in there let's go in there and make fun of them is basically what i said <laughs> <laughs> so i went in there and, like, I started, like, pretending to do yoga in, like, these different poses. And Ellen kept being like, oh, that's this pose. Yeah. Oh, that's I'm that like, pose. I'm like, do you like, do Lotus? I'm like, it took me forever to do Lotus, man. He's just like, I'm just <laughs> making things up, and you're just calling out names. <laughs> and I'm like, Bro, you're I wasn't, super flexible. Like, I wasn't if you sure practice, if... sky's the limit, buddy. Yeah, I think I'm Sky's good. the limit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that moment was a highlight of Gen Con because mm-hmm. we were all so exhausted and we had just had the big dinner and whatever. And we're like, should mm-hmm. we go play a game? Should we, you know, it, we were kind of, should we do a game? That's what we're here for. And all of a sudden we all just kind of sat down and we're like, no, let's just talk and hang out. And it was such a real like person moment. Mm-hmm. Um, it was so fun. We talked about our families and our friends and just life stuff. And um, I actually was not the first person on the floor. And That's I was right. so thankful. I think it was Crystal. <laughs> um, Matthew. Yeah, she was. She's like sat down on the floor. And was like, oh my gosh, I want to stretch so bad, but I don't want to look weird. And she started doing something. And then Matthew Jude was like doing some weird sit ups, uh, stand. Like kind yeah, of thing. some stand test thing. And so like, I'm like, here we go. Your legs and like here we go. Next thing you know, we're all doing sun salutations baby <laughs> that's awesome so fun yeah yeah i i think that's one of the things like about this gen con and gen con's so hard to like actually get games played just because there's so much coming on and it's like sure. sensory overload when you're down on like the, the floor and yeah. um i just wanted to focus more at this gen con like about like hanging out and building relationships as opposed to like necessarily playing games and there's plenty of other conventions that are awesome for playing games at dice tower um cons but uh <laughs> and and board game geek con i've heard is really good for playing games at as well but um but yeah there's just so many people in the industry that are cool and fun to talk to especially people that like you talk to on the internet all the time or you see right. their videos and stuff like that it's like oh man i would love to like so get cool. to know them more you know so it's kind of cool that you got to hang it. out and do that yeah, it was it was great, and you know, almost everybody there we had met for the first time in person. Mm-hmm. The only people we had met was um, Tom and Z, Z, pretty much from. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we uh, Brant Sanders. And... Oh yeah, we had we met Brant. That's right yeah. before. But besides that, we had not really met any of these other people in person, and really yeah. didn't even talk to. Mm-hmm. On no, social not media really. with a lot of the Dice Tower contributors and people. So. I got to tell mm-hmm. you, DT people are like the most friendly it's ridiculous like i just walked in i'm like i'm here and everybody's just talking and like i knew them forever it was it was crazy so fun yeah Yeah, i know me and delicia were talking last week about like how you watch like people people watch your content and they feel like they get to know you and i'm sure you guys had tons of people come up and be like oh man i love your stuff and this and that and it's like they already feel like they know you but like us as contributors and different things like that we all see each other's stuff and we all feel like we already know each other it's kind of weird in that way that's true yeah, yeah it's, it's always pretty shocking how many people like recognize something that you've done or mm-hmm. something you know mm-hmm. like even emerson matsuchi said oh yeah i've seen you on, oh my gosh. on uh, 
I've board game breakfast before. I'm like, yeah. Can I have a real okay. honest moment with everybody <laughs> right now? That? No idea who he was. I had no <gasps> idea. And also he's like, oh, you're from uh, you. You got we game together. You guys, I, I've seen you whenever. And I'm just like, oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you to say. And, and also Ray's like, he made, like he, you know, century he made spice, and I'm like, century spice. Oh know. my gosh. <laughs> That was Spectre actually... Ops. You have to start with Spectre Ops. No, Spectre Ops. Okay. Have you played Spectre Ops, Randy? Uh, no, I know what it is, but I, I haven't. We haven't Not played enough a lot cubes of those kind for of you. One verse. Many... <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty amazing More moment. Cubes. Also, me. Yeah, you can make those cubes so. wherever you want, as long as they function the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I prefer the uh, gym version myself. The golem. Yeah, right. The it's golem. Uh, very Blitzer. colorful. Yeah, now they're actually coming out with the. I know. I didn't think though. that was gonna happen, but. Oh, we got them all now. There's no. I think Emerson no had to fight to make no that problem. happen. So. Really. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like dealing with spices though. I don't know why. I just think it's. Yeah, Ellen cute. says she likes spices. I don't better. know why. I just like saying it. <laughs> yeah, spices. Uh, yeah, spices. I don't know. It, funny inside story is like Plaid Hat had that game first. Um, yeah. and then it ended up like it, it ended up going through like the ringer through all sorts of different stuff. Cause then Z man had it and then they didn't publish it and then they split off and, and, oh, wow. uh, oh, then plan gosh. B ended up like that game basically started plan B, but when plaid hat had it, Colby wanted to, uh, make all the spices scented, like the different spices and decided that would be a really <laughs> bad idea. You just open yeah. up the box and just all these yeah. smells and stuff. Just, yeah. It would just smell like, like <laughs> garbage. They should have just like put too, the know? spices in there, like not even have a cube. Just like, right. here's your spices. You could have, have like perfect. little vials of the actual spices. <laughs> that would be super thematic. Yeah, it would. Yeah. <laughs> I love that game though. So. Spice trading with actual spices. With actual spices. I'm sure spices. it'd be yeah. all fine until you get to like saffron or whatever, and it's like, oh, it's right. a little bit more pricey. Cardamom, saffron. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, oh man, the price of the game went up. Why? Because it has actual spices in it. Because you can actually cook with it. Play a game and then make yourself chicken. <laughs> You're like, oh man, I I need need to make this this recipe. I need some cinnamon. Oh, I think we have some cinnamon in our century game. Where's our board Maybe it'll come with a cookbook. That'd be cool. Out. Yeah, it comes with a cookbook. Exactly. Man, that's Expansion. what they need next is like resin cubes with the actual thing inside of it. Yeah. There's a market there. We just figured that out. Yeah, well, they good. had that smelly whatever game sense or whatever they call those. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Oh yeah. They had some. They had some obviously some really funky ones like. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But <laughs> I don't think those ever caught on because I haven't heard about them in like a while. Yeah. I saw them at Gen Con. Oh really? They're still I don't, they're still pushing. Yeah, I don't them. know if it was like I don't know if it was that same brand or whatever, but they had a whole table of uh, scented game scents or whatever. It's like <laughs> Dusty Tavern. Uh, I know they, a lot of them are like this like nasty like RPG <laughs> oh, thank kind you. of. <laughs> Sense. It's like I always wanted to smell that fish docks, and you're just like, no, thanks, <laughs> no, that's not, I'm good, uh, I'm good. <laughs> like we can stop least... the realism at a certain point yeah, in the like, game. Right, right. Rotten flesh, as maybe as gross, rotten flesh is probably stop. too far. Like, yeah. You're playing zombie side, and you're like, Rotting you wanted to flesh. smell like real zombies? No. <laughs> <He's> like, oh, <laughs> gore. <Blood-scented. laughs> Yummy. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys have been doing board game media stuff for a while. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you actually like got into like tabletop games and board games. So into the hobby in general. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I had grown up playing mass market games like a lot mm-hmm. of people, but I feel like I played the better mass market games in general. Like I would play like Stockpile mm-hmm. and Careers and you know Risk and Axis and Allies yeah, yeah. and some of the more. I don't know if you can call them advanced uh, mass market games. Mm-hmm. And that's what I liked growing up. Like Monopoly was fine, but like I could tell that I'm like, oh, I'm like I don't want the luck thing. I <laughs> want I want to be able here. to control the game <laughs> and things. I didn't know what any of that meant at the time, like mechanics or I didn't know any of that kind of right. thing. Um, and then I just kind of stopped playing board games in general. Did the whole video game thing because mm-hmm. that's the era that I grew up in. Yeah, for sure. And hey, found. Love. Caverna was actually like the first game I had bought. Wow! From listening to like top tens on Dice Tower. So, so did you just did you Dice randomly Tower. stumble upon the top tens, or is it just? I I've I thought about this often trying to figure out exactly. I think I actually had seen Tabletop the show, uh-huh. you know, with the Will Wheat show. I think I had seen that first, and then by searching, I'm a top ten list kind of a person. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be like, oh, top. 
four games, and Maybe I think that one, from and if you type in top ten board games, it's just right. a million Dice Tower videos. <laughs> right. So I think I had found it from there, and you know a lot that of the top right. ten essential games, movies, so. you know that obviously it has like oh, well over a million views now. I think I had come some come across some of those, and I had found a couple of games, and I bought almost probably my first thirty ish games based off of like top tens. Gotcha. And I know you I know you shouldn't do this, but this is just how I function. I would look at the top three, I'd find the crossovers basically between like the three of the three guys and go, Well that's the one I'm gonna get. You're like, if uh, all I, three I, of them I like it, it must that. be great. Well right. Surely right. I must love so it. So I, I did a lot of that for buying so pandemic, you know, was you know, yeah. that's pretty universally liked. Mm. Um, so I had bought a bunch of games. And Ellen, I just could never really get Ellen to play any of them. Okay, you don't go from not gaming to Caverna. Well, that's true. Yeah, Caverna so. is Caverna is a little bit up there. Like, was that actually like the first one you got? Gosh. It was one of the first five for sure. Gotcha. That's like, that's crazy. That, that and Pandemic is the ones I know for sure that were like within the top five first purchases. So was it immediately like this is going to be a new hobby for me, or did it did yes. it take a while to grow? Yeah, because like no, like instantly. Like, I was, gotcha. like, buying stuff. It was just, like, buying stuff. And I wasn't, like, going crazy with it, per se. I'd buy, like, a couple a month or I two. I think or... also you were trying to find games that I would play with. Right, that I was, was doing like a lot of searching of... one thing you were, like, trying right. to... Mm-hmm. And so I was... I tried, like, co-op games. She was like, oh, you know, she doesn't like confrontation so much. Mm-hmm. But, like, she hates cooperative hate, way I... more than... than <laughs> you hate more cooperative than games? Ah. More than losing, it. I hate working with people. Apparently, she doesn't like being told what to do. Like I will die on my own. I don't need your help. Right. There's a difference in cooperative and and alpha gaming the other player. Uh, You know. Very true. But especially on our earlier of our gaming career, I was not. I wouldn't say I was necessarily alpha, but I was pretty far. Because I'm like, because I'm like, oh, I want to win. I want to do this. I want to do this. It wasn't like the experience per se. It was like. No, we gotta beat this game, okay? So we gotta do this, and we gotta do this, and we gotta do this. Yeah. So and then you watched like, all the videos where they sure. talked about not doing that, Randy. Right, and like, hopefully, well, you pulled time. that back. Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we would do, like, we uh, played Pandemic with your dad a number mm-hmm. of times, and mm-hmm. we were both the same way. So we would just kind of, we would bounce ideas off of each other. None of us would either, none of us would, like, overpower the person, but us together would overpower everybody else at the table, because we'd just be talking back and forth about, well, if you do this move, and this move, and this move, and this move. I would never yeah. think that that you guys would have strong personalities at all. I mean, right? It's weird. It's so weird. Uh, so then I ended up bought a bunch of games, and then I ended up buying like a couple of solo games. I bought Oniram, and uh, so you Friday. couldn't get Ellen to play with you, so you bought games to play by yourself. I, oh, I, I'm like, I oh, yeah, maybe I'll no, at least play some games not. here and there by myself. Yeah, because uh, I'm like, I really enjoy this. I'm like, oh, there's some really cool stuff. Oh, in that's here. so sad. You bought Friday to play by yourself. That's so sad. It's not that sad. <laughs> We just had we just had Delisio on back. there. It's right. it's really sad. You just oh my gosh. everybody knows solo gamers don't have friends. Around. Just kidding, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. then I don't know. We probably bought 30, 40 ish games. So mm-hmm. we're just sitting on the shelf and not being played at all. Like yeah. barely, like hardly at all. That's right. So that was super sad. So you didn't have like That's a true. game group. You're like, this is for no, us. No, we didn't at all. Yeah. In fact, we only got this a game group until like bond. much much later. Yeah. In in our gaming life. Oh, crazy. Uh, we actually just actually had a talk. We had like almost like a sit down kind of a talk about um, how we watched a lot of TV together. And we would, you know, you'd, you'd have some interaction mm-hmm. when you're watching TV. Mm-hmm. But it's like going on a first date to a movie theater. You're right. not really talking to your mm-hmm. date, yeah, per yeah. se. So we would be watching TV just kind of on the couch and mm-hmm. we'd laugh at a scene or we'd talk about something that happened on whatever show. Mm-hmm. But we weren't really interacting at all. And I, mm-hmm. I kind of brought it up that way. I said, you know, I want something that we can actually kind of do together, you know, that doesn't really cost necessarily a lot of money, meaning like going out to eat costs 50, 60, 70 bucks now for a, for a couple of people to go out to eat. Right. And that's just over in an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up getting. So you're like, hey, we could buy a $60 game. <laughs> right, yeah. That's right, exactly. Some great replayability. <laughs> Multiple I was wondering here. why you're you're eating at such fancy restaurants. That's just to pitch <laughs> that you should get the expensive game. That's exactly right. what we I could was spend sixty dollars yeah. on a game. Could. Like you yeah. can eat for way less than sixty. No, sixty dollars <laughs> to eat. It. That's what it. That's, that's what it, it costs. <laughs> uh, I don't remember exactly at what point, but we ended up getting Castles of Burgundy. Mm. Which is that really what brought you, know, you in, Ellen? 
it's that was, that was my gateway. That was game. like her gateway game. Was and it's it was literally so because it had the word castles in it. And I was like, and I like the color burgundy, so let's do this. You're like, and then I ended color up like, and castles. Let's <laughs> do this. And it was so much later that I even decided to buy like a Euro mm-hmm. game. Because at that point, I kind of yeah. understood like the difference. And I knew right away what I liked. I mm-hmm. mean, even growing up, you know, like stock market game and careers, those are all more of like the Euro-y of the mass market games mm-hmm. out there. So I knew already kind of what I liked. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think in a million years she played castles. And I... It stopped. I didn't even bother buying it for the longest time. Yeah. Finally got it. Well, yeah, and honestly, like the reason I didn't want to play is because I'm way too competitive. Mm-hmm. Way, way. And so, like when we were on our honeymoon, on our honeymoon, y'all, we played foosball. <laughs> we played right. foosball. I won. <laughs> okay. <Huh? laughs> he, won by, <laughs> he won by one point from across the entire board and I was like that is the cheapest I literally was so mad like on our honeymoon and it was ridiculous and I'm like (gasps) we cannot play any game against each other ever I'm way too competitive and like this is going to be unhealthy for us because I just get so revved up like I hate losing and Roy I still deal with this problem I hate losing (laughs) I really do so anyways I was like we just can't we can never do this it's just never is going to be a thing so he tried to get me into it and I was like no no it's going to be this that and the other thing Mm-hmm. Really, the number one thing that got me into gaming was Randy having that sit down talk with me. And like, I've had people reach out to me um, in our board gaming and say, "How did you? You know, I'm trying to get my wife or my my SO into playing. How do we do this?" And I'm like, Randy pitched it to me as a way to bond and to hang out. And I was like, that is actually really sweet because I was like, he just wants to use me to play games. I I'm never going to be as I'm good. That made this is what I build up in my head. This is what I do. I was like, he just wants to play games whatever I'm not even good I'm not going to be any competition but then once he's like babe like I really just want to hang out so I was mm-hmm. like all right I'm going to give this a try and it still didn't work for the longest time like it didn't I was just like I didn't enjoy yeah. it at all mm-hmm. cuz I didn't feel like smart enough or like capable it was just it was weird it was this whole big thing that I kind of went through yeah. but then um once we figured out <laughs> once I figured out castles of burgundy it all kind of all I realized yeah. like oh I like euro gaming I love that I love feeling like, kind of solitaryish but with somebody Mm-hmm. You know that I you just don't like when people content. like try to take away something you've built up or like m- mess over right. your victory or whatever. Right, right, right. right. But we do play some direct confrontation. <laughs> we we ha- we are, are actually dabbling anyway. in a lot more different kind of games than mm-hmm. we did initially because well, I'm like, like even if, like Targi, for instance, oh, sure, that's sure. a two player uh, Cosmos game. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a that's a very much back and forth kind of, and you can you know mess people over by taking a card of yeah. theirs or whatever you're doing. So mm-hmm. we'll play that kind of stuff where it's like, it's very much meant to be that, but it's not, you know, if I did something to her, it wouldn't like mess up the entire plan. Well, also forever. to be fair, Randy is so not an alpha gamer at all. And he is so gracious about like, I know this was actually recently on the board game breakfast, I believe they talked about the person like telling you what you should do before mm-hmm. your turns up because then you could miss something They're like, do you do that? Do you not do that? Yeah. I think there's so many different situations in which that could or could or not apply. But he knew that like, I know she doesn't see that, and I'm going to help her see it. And so he actually, like, trained me to think in that way with gaming. And I feel like I feel like I'm, like, can catch on to more things in everyday life now that, like, I play a ton of games. It's, like, translated into my everyday life, just thinking and thinking problems through and stuff like that. It's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. I mean, so I think that's one of the things board games is huge on is, like, helping you figure out problems. Because, I mean, that's the majority crazy. of what board gaming is, right? Yeah. Right. It's crazy, yeah. I right. notice a huge difference just in my thinking, even my reading. Like when I would just mm-hmm. like read for fun, I don't know. Like it's just it just feels different. I feel smarter. <laughs> <laughs> but I will you... tell you, an awesome moment that I had with Dice Tower is I lost a game and I was literally crying. Like I'm not even gonna lie. I'm uh-huh. an honest person, right? I was crying. I was so upset. So I wrote this post to Dice Tower, just the group, and I'm like. Does anybody else feel this way, or am I crazy? Because I'm like, I'm literally <laughs> crying. I'm like going to be 30 years old. I'm crying. Mm-hmm. What the heck? And I had so many people were so kind, and they're like, No, this is like a real thing. Like, and they were so helpful with how to kind of get over it, and how to change your mindset before you go yeah, into sure. a game, and like, it, it's a whole big thing. And mm-hmm. it was super helpful to talk to people about that. I mean, you had almost like quit. Yeah. At least for a small. I actually, of time. I actually um, left the Dice Tower group. Oh, for a sorry. time, I actually <sighs> left the group. I know, <laughs> Roy. <laughs> I forgot about that. You had quit because all... I was so upset. Yeah, I was I like, forgot. I'm never gonna be like smart enough. It was this weird thing that I went through. 
I'm like, I can't do this with my husband. It is so depressing to me and I want to do it, but like I'm, I'm terrible and it makes me upset. Like it's not healthy. So I left the group and then I ended up working through that. And here I am. <laughs> what do you think like helped curb like the, the the need to be like super competitive or whatever? Is it just being like it's just a game or maybe like I'll learn from this experience and maybe do better next time or Well, there's two things. And one and not everybody has this, so I realize how like thankful I should be is that Randy so was always like so sweet and would come alongside me and be like, "Do you want to talk about, you know, maybe what you could do better next time or like do you have any questions about it?" So him doing that and then me being like, you didn't I'm just say like this. get good noob and flip the board. And walk away. <laughs> Jeez, noob. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you need to get better. So this like, is you actually this fun game for how me. How many times now? <laughs> you are <laughs> terrible. Uh, it was between that and like I'm gonna get better than I did the last time. That kind of mental shift for me helped a lot. Like I'm not necessarily going to try to beat Randy, though I still. That's all I want in life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get better than I did the last time, and yeah, I'm okay with that. What game were we just playing? Well, Moonrakers. We were just playing Moonrakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, sitting at, like, nine <laughs> points, and ten points is, like, when you win. Mm -hmm. And the next I closest person four. needed, like, four points. And everybody <laughs> literally just king makes Ellen. To, and then I, I lost. I was like, guys, how Listen, about we all... When you win too much... Now? It has to happen. You seriously, get your come up. It's... Seriously, me and the and one guy who comes over quite often to play with us, like we have this thing. I'm like, if we're ever gonna lose to him, one of us has to help the other person. <laughs> I've I've seen that happen in my game group a lot too. When I win too many games, it's just like at a certain point they all start ganging yeah. up against you. Right, right. Yeah, it's but ridiculous. I played. You know, it's nothing bad. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. you know they're just kind of messing around, and I don't care. And and it's not like it happens like every game. If like it happened every game, then I'd be start. I'd start being like, okay, guys, right, this, right. this is. This is no longer fun for me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. But I played a lot of like card game tournaments when I was younger, and I mean that's one of the things that I mean you lose a lot when you play those things. But you always, I feel like in gaming, you always learn a lot more about the game or about like what you can do when you lose as opposed to when you win. I mean, when you win, you're more likely to just like double down on the thing you did before. But like when sure. you yeah. lose, you're more able to just be like okay what what are the strategies of this game like how can what did i do wrong how can i make that better and i feel like like losing and failing in things is really important because then you can mm. like improve oh sure and i mean that's oh, not just sure. in gaming that's in life in general mm -hmm. you know there I is mean, there is power to be had in losing absolutely yeah, yeah. the more you know the more you know <laughs> i feel like you just <laughs> learn a lot more through things going wrong <laughs> it's kind of weird yeah. like the way that life works that way but, Especially how my brain thinks too. Like, huh. I'm I'm a problem solver by nature. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just like how everything I if I see something, I have to work out how it how to fix it. And mm -hmm. I I have a tough time letting things go until I figure it out in some regard. It's true. So if, if something goes wrong, I'm like, I'm figuring that out for like the next like eight hours. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's that would be our um. My phone. No, our house device. I don't want to say her oh. name because then she'll react. No, that was my theory. I don't know why the heck that went off. Yeah, Randy's Randy likes to think <laughs> through the problems and like really gets intense about fixing it. And I'm just like, ah, maybe I'll do better next time. Maybe I won't. So we're very different in that way. But no, yeah, it's definitely losing all those times has helped me to like learn more and you know train my brain. brain well, brain. now that you've y'all have been playing like tons of different games and you have this this segment and this channel and all this stuff and you're always on the 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 group this group because um, we always. stream these into here um but uh what would you say are like some of your favorite games to play now like if people want to be like oh yeah this is randy and ellen's favorite games or whatever what would you say were your favorite go first i could pick ellen's you could <laughs> i could probably oh, man, I hope um, so. <laughs> my favorite <laughs> my favorite are definitely euros obviously yeah. it's uh, right. hands down now I've played some, some Ameritrash or Thrash or whatever. Well, you said you used to play Risk back everybody. in the day. Yeah, and Axis and Allies and things. Mm -hmm. And I love, I like those games still. And I even played TR4 game. and had a had a really good time playing that. Um, but it's still Euro games is where it's at. So mm -hmm. I guess my favorites currently are, I like Great Western Trail a lot. Mm -hmm. That one's really good. Um, Feast for Odin is fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's a yummy game. Uh, mm. Carpe Diem, I like a lot too. Castles of Burgundy, those are probably some of the ones that are really up there. Yeah. 
but yeah, right. <laughs> Beast Rodin. Yeah, love it. Obviously, Castle of Burgundy. I love Shards of Infinity. Like, oh really? I, yeah, I'm I'm discovering that I love um, <clears throat> um, deck building. Yeah. And then um, mm-hmm. negotiating. Like I didn't realize that I like negotiating, but like I'm starting to be like, oh we've never my really gosh. played a negotiating game we together. Yeah, Moonrakers was like the yeah, first one. I'm like, this team. That's fantastic. Really that's stinking fun. Coming to mm-hmm. Kickstarter, what in a week or so? I think so. Yeah. I almost was really good. <laughs> that was that a good a time. Um, we actually got the expansion for um, Shards of Infinity. Still need to try. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, Teoti Wakan. Oh, oh yeah, nice, I son. That I love that fantastic. game so much. I love just oh, and like, Black Angel and Reverse was really good. Oh my good gosh, too. Black Angel! Oh, <laughs> there's so many. Black, right? Black, Black Angel is like brand new though, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't so... say that that's like my favorite favorite per se, but but you had a I, sparkle you, in your eye when you played much, it. That's that's gonna definitely be up there, I think, for a while. It's fantastic. Yeah. So those are just some games that I hmm. adore. And Sentry. How do how much do you think that like the games that you start out playing or like the first games that you play sort of like affect like your taste in gaming? Like you said you played like oh I played Stockpile and these different games that are very like economic games and I grew up playing like role playing games and D and D and and CCGs. So it's kind of like I'm very much in the thematic like give me story mm-hmm. camp, which makes sense yeah. with D and D, and you're very mm-hmm. much in the like push numbers camp which makes sense with yeah, the games you started with that's very true because now that you put it like that that's i mean even point. when i played axis and allies i had made a four by eight mm-hmm. custom tabletop i even had like a i had I access to like a cnc machine. Did, you keep, did you keep the stats of the games that's when you know <laughs> yeah like we would yeah kind of <laughs> that's like, a very like euro gamer up... thing to do even when you're playing the ameritrash game <laughs> it's like yeah but what about yeah. the numbers <laughs> right right so and I had so I had the whole thing and I was really really into Axis and Allies mm-hmm. and like I said I had all this table I had like a class top table that would like inlay and set the thing on really cool looking thing but even now that you mentioned it even looking back on then I didn't care anything about like oh this is the battle of this or this mm-hmm. is this kind of tank like I had people that I'd play with like mm-hmm. oh this is this is the whatever you know Abrams tank and they would do this and this I'm like it rolls two dice. You know? yeah. <laughs> You're like, That's I just cool. care about the mechanics and the math. Right. Maybe super yeah. not so even, like, even you since care. I can remember, I really have never ever cared about theme in oh, any I'm game. Oh, I'm so opposite. I'm so opposite. Like we well, played, we played. Thought. I never Con, thought of what was it called? Kanban. Kanban, yeah, that's great. And he loved it, and mm-hmm. I was just like, if it was about like makeup. I might like it. Like, to me, theme <laughs> is super important. And also, I grew up playing, like, oh, my gosh, every... I had... So, let's see, I had one sister and 11 brothers. So, there were 13 kids in the house. And every Christmas, we would get new games because they would all be destroyed mm-hmm. <laughs> from Christmas to Christmas. <laughs> right. So, every year, we would get Pictionary, and we would get a themed, like, Monopoly, and uh-huh. we would get, like, Don't Break the Ice, like, you know... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ants of the Pants. Yeah, yeah Ants of the Pants, exactly. Like, seriously... And uh, I remember loving what they were about. Like, I didn't necessarily care about the mechanic of it, mm-hmm. if you can even say that with those kind of games. But I was just like, look, there's little ice cubes. And to this day, I'm just like, it needs to look cute. And I need to like the theme. Like, it's mm-hmm. important to me. I, I didn't think that that was a big deal for me for a while. But, no, it is. Theme matters to me. But you have to have good mechanics or you won't play oh, sure. it also. Well, yeah. But I'd still play, like, Pretty Pretty Princess. Well, that's just story. solid games, straight up. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how you'd retheme Kanban to be about makeup. Like, are you like making up the face instead of building cars? Right. You would have that's to. Exactly you'd have to doing. do like the research. There's different on it, right? brushes for different for your highlighter and your bronzer, and yeah, it's you a whole thing. It. You could do it's it. There's more thing. to makeup than you think, Roy. <laughs> no, no. I mean, my wife loves makeup too, so that's what I was saying. I know. We I need, saw her need... dazzling eyes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Like every, every picture that I, I post with my wife and Ellen's in there commenting, "Oh my goodness, yeah, I love her she's eyes." She's so pretty. Look at her eyes. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not denying that. Have you seen them, Roy? Like, oh my gosh. Have you ever I mean... looked at her eyes, Roy? <laughs> Have you ever looked Never, at her eyes? No. Never. <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, I mean, we need more uh, games of that like flavor and style. Like Ellen, time to start designing the makeup game. Let's do it. Yeah, the makeup do game. It. The makeup was... euro. <laughs> Yeah. Make up your own. yeah, baby. Rand- really Randy will figure out how to make some cubes in there. It's like, okay, this is this color palette cube, yeah. and this is that color this palette is, cube. This cube is lipstick. <laughs> this cube is bronzer. 
Uh, it could be that. pick up deliver too. Like you go to the Ulta store and then you have to go sure. back to the mirror to like do the makeup. <laughs> hey, you just said Ulta. I'm impressed that you knew that makeup store, Roy. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> he is married, you know. <laughs> I know, but still. Uh, Good times. Live there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, uh, are there any like games you guys are currently excited about or you guys have been playing recently? I know you said Black Angel, but is there anything else crazy like that? Uh, um, Reavers of the Guard. Probably... How did that play at three, by the way? We played it up on our vacation just with us two. I thought it was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love games. I love games that on somebody else's turn, you also can have the option of getting something. Yeah, for I sure. I love that. If there's a lot of yeah. downtime on my turn... I can stay with it, but I there's like a always a laundry list in my head, so my, I kind of start drifting of things I got to do or whatever. Mm-hmm. But when you're playing a game where you're getting stuff, I love everybody's it. Everybody's like every time somebody goes somewhere, fantastic. You basically get so to how did that play at three? Because it played really well. Yeah. In fact, it actually went from like 180 points to like 250 or something oh, like that. Yeah. At this yeah. point now, when I see games with like tons of downtime, I'm just like, this is poor game design like there's so many ways to yeah. make there yeah. not be downtime in a game yeah there's yeah. so many ways to keep the players involved in a game yeah. like come on designers like yeah figure yeah. out ways to do it make follow actions make simultaneous actions make things that are interactive on other players turns yeah. like it's so easy to do and it makes games fun you know totally. i mean even euro games have tons of mechanics that make it so you're not just like sitting there right. you know yeah, right, and another so. game we just played recently was Merlin, and so we had the, what is it, Queenie 1 and Arthur expansion or something? Yes. I really want to try that at three-player, because just with two, you have what you want to do in your head, but then on the other person's turn, they also can manipulate, like, the Merlin and the mm-hmm. Arthur, uh, whatever are those, meeples, pawns, whatever, I remember, they're, they're things, all right? So they can manipulate those. <laughs> and They should be choice. miniatures. No, I'm just kidding. They should be miniatures, yeah. They're miniature. <laughs> they're, like, yeah, they're, they're small. small. <laughs> they're small, exactly. So then, you know, then somebody moves those, and you're like, ah, and you got to, like, think over again. I mm-hmm. love stuff like that. Yeah. Love it. So Your chat saying AP Dice so Forge. Bad. I was so AP on that game. Oh. Chat saying oh, dice, dice Forge is a fun game where you get to do some stuff on every turn. That's like okay. where you roll the dice and like no matter what people roll, like everybody's just gathering resources all the time, okay. you know. I haven't played that one. It's a lot. That's in space space that happens a lot too. Yeah. Like it's like yes. they roll the dice. It's it's very much like how it is in in Settlers, you know. Settlers of Catan. It's yeah. like oh, I really want you to roll a six. That sort of thing. I actually have not played produce. Settlers of Catan. I've never played a full game. Is it a sacrilege to this hobby? No. I feel like at this point, at, at the beginning of board gaming, well, at least Euro gaming, like Settlers was like, oh. But at this point, most yeah. people now are like, skip it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, we were in the, right in that time of Settler was already kind of. I mean, you jumped out. Settlers and you went straight into Caverna, so, I mean. Uh, <laughs> and I had only I played it like once in like the whole year, so that, that tells you that. Yeah. I can only yeah. get like a select few people that actually play it with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Space Space, that got a lot of heat, I think. I heard a lot of people like, it's so ugly and it's so. I'm like, who cares? Really? The game is great. I like yeah, I liked it. I love Space Space. I like the better. Did we get Portal, the expansion for sure. that? I can't remember. Yeah, the Pluto. We've only played it like once or twice with okay. the Pluto so far. Our kids loved that one. Yeah, we got to play more games, dang it. Know, dang it. Why are we talking, talking, talking to Roy? Roy? we got to get out of here, man. we got some games to play. Crazy. <laughs> it's funny. Tom's like, I think they might play more games than me because you guys are just constantly posting things about playing games. Yeah, and people are like... It seems that way, but I, we only play like once I or twice a week. It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. But Ella's just really good them. at social media. She just takes pictures of the massive games you play and then schedules out yep. the posts. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I do. Actually, I've had a few people tell me like... Uh, you should post at this specific time of the day because mm-hmm. then there's more people who will see it. And I totally mm-hmm. understand that, but I don't have the patience for that. I'm just like, <laughs> take it, post it. <laughs> I don't even care. I'm like, whoever sees it, sees it. Um, so yeah. We're working on that. We're working on that. It is, okay, so people contact us <laughs> and they're like, you guys have kids. How do you play games with kids? So yeah, my answer, yeah. we do, we do, which I was like, am I a bad mom? Right. I'm like, I put them like in their cages, obviously, and like neglect them. That's what I do. <laughs> Um, we try to schedule our game time with our screen time. So um, the three older ones are very um, self-sufficient and independent. Mm-hmm. And so if they need something, they can get it. Um, and then we have like a two and a half year old. So he's, you know, he needs mama more. So with him, for sure, I'm up, you know, quite a lot during our game. 
But uh, it is but what it is. Then we just, you know, if anything, we yeah, say, oh, we go tell our 10 year old. Yeah, get him a snack. We'll get him a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just work. It just works for us. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So. We make and it y'all, y'all I mean, do we, a lot you know, of kids effort. games too, because I know you guys did the what is it, a kid in a shuffle. We played oh, that. Yeah, that's oh, right. that's so right. cute. <laughs> that's I a great it. game, though. It is. Uh, and like then we got ki- slide like, quest. As a kids too. game, that's really entertaining. Yeah, we got slide quest, which I played with my uh, oldest son, who really liked it. it. Felt like a video game on a board, mm-hmm. which I think was exactly what they were going for. Yeah. Um, and then oh, what's the new Hobo one we just got? With the lion uh, and oh, you're wobble, trying to wobble king. wobble king, yeah. So oh, I have nice. to play that with my. Uh, I played it once with them. Is he six or seven? They I weren't super thrilled with it. You I did? It oh, fun. you played with them already? Yeah. Oh, for Pete Sampras. What the heck was that? Do y'all y'all have like a different like several different age like ranges in your kids, right? So mm-hmm. is it like hard to find a game that works with all of them together since you have all the way down to two and all the way? What's your oldest one? Yeah, he's ten. He's almost. Yeah. He'll be eleven. Yeah, that's. Like yeah, so the so he's we got eleven, eight, six, and two and a half. Mm, that's crazy. And the eleven, eight, <laughs> and six year old, they're all you know they're all within that two year kind of span. So <clears throat> those three, we can usually find something to play with. It's like my my eleven year old doesn't like playing anything too. Yeah, he's really you not. Know, even like the some of the middleweight family games, he's just like ah, he's just not really super Our interested eight-year-old in those loves games though. Yeah, he's. In, He's more resistant than anybody, but when we play, he's always the most into it. So that's yep. kind of an interesting dynamic. He is so my kid. But um, <laughs> my yeah, so even like uh, what's that? My little scythe. Mm-hmm. They like that one a lot, but you know they they're like, ah, eh, that's fine. But like we want to like, have these epic gaming days with our kids, and they're just kind of like, yeah. Nah. It's mostly because our older <laughs> one doesn't isn't like yeah. super into it. I think it. if he set the tone they'd probably follow. But even games like Monza and uh, Caraxes and Co and mm-hmm. some of the stuff that's really more like in that six to eight year old mm-hmm. kind of range, that's the ones mm-hmm. that we play a lot yeah. with everybody together. Uh, Ticket to Ride First Journey, that's actually that oh, went yeah. over really well. Uh, my First Carcassonne went over really well mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. Fox in the not Fox in the Forest uh, Outfox. Fox, Outfox. Outfox. Yeah, that yeah. one they love. They Boys universally love that one, love that one together. So yeah. when I people keep ask seeing this, out Fox, and I really want to get it, but I've never gotten a copy of it's it. It's super cute. It's super cute. It's super good. It's it's pretty easy as far as that goes. You know, obviously it's like you know. It's a yeah, kid's you game. roll dice. You have choices to make. You can get mm-hmm. clues. But our or... kids, our kids will pull that one out. That's one yeah. of the few games. There's maybe mm-hmm. one of three to five games that our kids mm-hmm. will just kind of pull out on their own, yeah. and that's one of them that comes out a lot. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, my kids are always like, oh my goodness, let's play games, let's play games. But then, like, we'll start playing the game, and I'm like, take your turn! They're very... Yeah, yeah. right, they're still, right. They're still quite young, because, yeah. like, my son right. is six, and my daughter is five, so it's like they're still very, yeah, like, that's very ADD young. when it comes to it. The games have to yeah, be super the short. attention span, but, absolutely. Yeah. But we can but play that... the game uh, that you posted? You were playing with your son something. Did you oh, Dad, something? We what played We played Summoner Wars. So Summoner Wars okay. was the game oh. that, like... Kickstarted yeah. Plaid Hat basically didn't kickstart it because oh. kick, Kickstarter was barely a thing when that game came out. But um, okay. but I have a ton of Summoner Wars stuff. He's still a bit young for Summoner Wars, but basically what I did is I just took all of the special abilities out of the game, took all the reading out of the game. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna teach you the mechanics of the game, and he can he can tell what numbers are easy. He can be like, oh, that's just a two. Just the mechanics, two. you say? Hmm. <laughs> still had plenty of theme because we were still we were still summoners trying to defeat okay. each other. <laughs> but uh but yeah it was it was fun and he actually like understood like okay i can move this guy here move that guy there and roll the dice and uh it went over well and i mean he's still uh i mean he's six so he's still working on his reading but um he'll get to the point where that'll be there and like if that when that comes he'll just be able yeah. to pick up those sort of games like real quick but uh nice. that's why i posted in the group i was like hey what what games like because i was playing i mean we were basically playing the game minus like the crazy special abilities that would do things like, yeah. oh, you can do an extra die if you're adjacent to this guy, or hey, this yeah. guy can run over top of other people, that sort of stuff. Sure. It's just easier yeah. to do it with just like, this guy gets to roll two dice for attack and has this many hit points. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. But, That's really but it, was really, it was really fun. I may have pulled punches at the end to instead of being like... <laughs> it, it, it ended up where his guy... The, you win the game if you defeat the other person's summoner, and it ended up where... His summoner was right next to my summoner, and we were basically just rolling off. 
and it was really, really close. And I may have made my summoner retreat back into the corner and attack one of his other guys instead You're of attacking his leader. One of those parents, Roy. <laughs> Well, I want kidding, controversial kidding. subject for people. It's kind of crazy. It is. It, it is. I'm is. sure I'm it is controversial. And I mean, sometimes it. It. I mean, you want just, them to learn the game, works, and so. you want them to do good, but you also want them to enjoy it to be able to well, come back to it. Well, and every kid is so different. That's every kid is different. Every too. game is different. So much goes yeah. into that. You can't just pass judgment on somebody for doing right. what people they take, do as a family. People take the fact that oh, you're letting your kid win or giving your kid an easier time. Well, they're not. You know, they're not getting ready for defeat. Or they, you know, if they learn how to, they got to learn how to lose. I'm like, yeah, oh, I, I've have defeated to have him to in plenty of games every but... single time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Learn that right, lesson right. every time you play yeah. something. But I mean, on, I mean, besides that, we learned how to. I mean, we worked on drawing cards. I'd say, okay, draw five cards. He drew five cards out of the deck perfectly fine. I taught him how to do – there's a whole mechanic of like at the end of your turn, you discard cards out of your hand to build into magic. So he was trying to find the common units that were like the cheaper guys that he could get rid of to build magic. He was understanding that concept. He was noticing how the attack and the movement is and the cost for each of the characters on the thing. So we're learning numbers and like spatial recognition and like what adjacency was and i mean okay so it came down to like the last die roll and i could have <laughs> killed his guy i mean i don't know that i would have killed his guy i could have i could have whiffed the roll but i only needed to get like one success so i mean it might have happened he could have actually <laughs> won by himself it's random dice rolls but right. it was all the strategy up leading up to that point um and i want him to have fun and i want him to be like yeah. hey let's play that game again because i beat daddy right. last time but uh, yeah. never listen to this podcast, Scotty. He's in bed. It's fine. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's no, cool. that's, that's so are you the kind of family who like, okay, every Friday we're having a family game night, like try to get your kids to play more? Or are you kind of just like, <sighs> eh, if they approach me, they approach me, you know, we'll honestly they beg to play games all the time <laughs> really? and like yeah yeah they want to play games often like i i feel like oh. if i ever said hey do you want to play this game they would immediately say yes or hey what board game do you play they would immediately say yes but then it's oh. just kind of like getting their attention after we've got it right we're right, halfway right. through the game is kind of yeah. hard sometimes to keep their attention yeah. but yeah we depends straight on the up game. been like uh you know what let's just play the other half of the game later because it gets to mm. the point where it's just falling apart and you want them to leave on a good note when they're when especially they're if you like have all that. three of them together because they'll like yeah. lose attention at certain certain times of yeah. the game so yeah. when we play all something all together it's definitely on the lighter side just to mm-hmm. try to keep everybody right. entertained yeah and i'm sure with your your age range it's like hard to find something that fits yeah. everybody you yeah. know yeah we all love Animal Upon Animal, though. Like, mm-hmm. I will play that any day of the week. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. uh, it's cute. We've been playing the Unicorn Glitter Luck Cloud Stacking, which is basically like oh. cooperative Animal Upon Animal. But yes. you, like, move like a little unicorn around. I don't know how well that would work with uh, four boys. That the They pink would not game. go for it. <laughs> I know. They would not. They are just you straight need, up, like, You need, a, like, boys. Dragon Hava. Upon Dragon or something like that's, that, and they make it all. You were talking said, to the guy at Hava. Hava said something about them doing, like, a dragon version. Because I wanted the game for me. I was like, I want, I need that glittery pink game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, my kids are not going to I don't know if they'll me. actually do it, but they, thought, they said they had at least a yeah. minimum considered it. They've, yeah. they've done that for some of their other games. They make the – they have the – the unicorn glitter luck version then they make a a i guess boys one of that okay. or just a yeah. more dragony version sure. of it or whatever yeah. as opposed right. to unicorns version of it. you know i love Hava so much yeah their yeah, games are great like stuff. we like literally we have like a whole shelf that's almost just straight up just yellow games um oh, with rhino right. hero and all that stuff but i play a lot of cooperative games with them i know you said you didn't like cooperative stuff but my kids could do really well with it yeah, I mean, if I was playing, with, like, I would definitely co-op with the kids. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just miss me, like, okay, all of us adults are getting together. It's a Thursday game night. Let's play co-op. Nah. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> I do not one that you liked yet. I do it, but it's for a very different reason. It's for the, the story and the interaction sure. in between the players that happen along. Have you ever played, like, like Mansions of Madness or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I've played it twice. I don't think I have. I think that was just you. Um, I like the puzzles in it. Me too. The puzzles are awesome. <laughs> yeah, but like walking around, like miniature games in general, it's just like, eh. Okay, okay, so co-op, Sorry. the exit games and the unlock games. <laughs> yeah. Those are fun. I'll play those. Yeah, those are like, those are awesome. That I really genre, like. And it just feels, game. yeah, it's right. But it's co-op, but it doesn't feel like you're sitting there, you're not sitting there reading cards with abilities and like, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? You're just kind of grabbing and like looking and like yeah, yeah. discovering. That I like. I like getting my hands in there and just 
you know, it's just not waiting around for everybody to like say what they think we should do. I'm like, you don't do like something. that. You don't like that aspect of like negotiating it out. Not not in those terms, no, no, yeah. no, yeah. no. <laughs> she definitely does not. No. Have you ever played something crazy like Cosmic Encounter or anything like that? I have not. Like, that's you? like extreme yeah, negotiation right there. Yeah. Okay. It's very much similar. It's got Moonrakers has some similarities. To oh, that, okay. For sure. I would love to try that. I, I love like, Moonrakers. That was so fun. It's like a movie. Like I have a plan. Can... I know what I need. I'm like, come and help me with this thing, and I'll give you mm-hmm. a little bit. Like I love that. That was yeah, so yeah. fun. That was a good time. Yeah, yeah. Moonrakers has it where you can, you can do us. You can solo a mission if you want, but then you can try to get people to to jump in on your mission also, and then you have to figure out how you split the spoils, essentially. Yeah. Essentially. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Cosmic's not directly like that, but you can. You can go and battle somebody and then, like, try to get people to join you in a certain battle mm-hmm. and then other Yeah, if you're on the offensive side, you battle. both kind of get points and you're trying to get to, like, you're trying to get five colonies to win the game. Mm-hmm. But you can win the game collaboratively with other people. Right. Um, so whenever I play that game, I'm like, I don't care. I want to try to win the game at all costs. I don't care if, like, everybody else mm-hmm. is winning with me. Like, let's just do it right, together. Right. It's like right. a really weird way to play the game, but I'm just like, let's win together, guys. <laughs> and I'm always, like, rooting for everybody to be right there on the edge of winning. And normally oh the game God. ends, like, one person isn't going to win. Like, because yes. so you're going to have to be attacking somebody to take over the colony. So I'm just like, I hope I don't pull you because you're going to be the person who I'm not oh, inviting. Right. And I'm like, hey, everybody <laughs> else, join me. Let's all win except that guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. We have fun. I love it. And then something crazy will happen, and he'll play some crazy card and mix things up, and it'll be like, ah, now I win instead of all of y'all. I mean, Cosmic is just crazy like that. I'm, I'm oh, sure Randy's God. like, oh, man, that, that hurts my brain to even think about the randomness of that sort. <laughs> I, mean, I don't mind that kind of stuff. I really um, don't. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll try any game. It, it really it drastically depends on the game. It really does. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm playing a game like, for instance, Twilight Imperium, I use that as an example because that's literally only one of the only like American whatever games I've. Yeah, but twice. That did you play three or four? Four. I mean, they it's, both it's have got a lot such, of euros. Yeah, stuff. they have a lot of euro influence, and I mean, it's like a race to ten points, you know. But if I'm working for like two hours on something, or if I'm working an hour and into a game, and it comes down to I chuck twenty dice, you chuck fifteen dice, that's like that's not. You know, that's a lot of people, that's like a stand-up moment, like, oh, you know, I, I got however many Stand points. Up. All I can think of is like, this is ridiculous how overpowered this is over that one, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or ran- random, I guess. That Maybe not overpowered is probably not the right word, but... Well, I mean, I feel like Twilight Imperium is an interesting game because people can approach it from different aspects. But I've played that game yeah. so much that it's like every combat, or it, you should probably never go into combat in that game. Like you should try to just sure. never go into combat. But it's like, if yeah. you do... It better be like leading you towards like getting points or getting victory in the game. And I mean, you have those crazy people out there that are just attacking people for the sake of attacking people. You just have to. I that's where the. That. That's where you dial up the negotiation, being like, "Listen, man, it's not in your best interest." <laughs> let's, have, let's have a talk right. about this before right. you do anything. Crazy. I always point to the objectives. You're supposed to be trying to get those. <laughs> Go after objectives, <laughs> not me. Does this, this give you a though, point? I'd like to try this. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I love negotiation in games. It doesn't yeah, work cool. out for me after a while because people are like, Roy's too good at these games. Let's just kill him. And that happens. <laughs> so That's <laughs> uh, turning into Randy these days. Yeah. Randy. Sorry. As long as somebody else at the game table wins, I also win in my mind. <laughs> as long as Randy loses, I win. <laughs> I've definitely That's played games with. like that before. Uh... We used to um, – play bang a lot like the card game back when before the dice game ever came out it's like social deduction but it's like wild west and you're like shooting each other and trying to take out the the different people and you don't know who's what role but whenever i'd play with heather she's just like we'd sit down start playing the game she's immediately like everybody shoot roy i'm just like what did i do (laughs) yeah what's going on i played that with a group of i don't know five or six or whatever it was um and i was like i don't know fourth i was like second to last to go whatever Mm -hmm. position that ended up being and I didn't even get a turn. Yeah, because that's rough. it wasn't. It wasn't because they're like going after me specifically. They're going, okay, well, since he did this and he did this, I, I'm relatively sure that he is somebody besides. I don't even remember all the roles, but basically, mm-hmm. he's either the the sheriff or Not like this. I can't remember what the other role is. But anyway, 
So they're like, so we're just going to attack him. So I, I was like, out. Like, like, <laughs> That's what happens with cashing guns. Kind of it's like one, two, three. <laughs> every time it's so funny because like in cash and guns i'm like sitting there counting the score so like i normally know who's winning and then Uh i tell everybody so and so is winning we need to like make sure they don't get more stuff so they all (laughs) point their guns at me (laughs) (laughs) and they're like roy's lying he must be winning no (laughs) i'm trying to tell you they're winning up this entire time you like cash and guns because you actually like that's fun go you know you actually can participate in Mm -hmm. in certain in certain rounds and you know, it'd be very rare for you to go out in the first round. Oh yeah, in that. For sure. especially because you could just lay your character down and then not die. Yeah, it'd be you know, your own four, fault. There's four guns pointing at you. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, fine. I'll I'll skip this one and maybe I'll have better luck on the next one. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I think I think bang the card game was like back before player elimination was like super taboo. Now it's like no matter what, we got to figure out how to keep people playing the game because it's yeah. it seems to be the first one out like you said oh like gosh. in werewolf it's like hey we're playing 30 player werewolf the first That's night the we thing. lynch you oh you're a villager we didn't know <laughs> we just killed you for no reason have fun going to eat snacks yeah. you know <laughs> yeah i don't mind a player elimination so much it's it's exactly that where you don't even get a chance to like really mm-hmm. participate in the game or contribute to the game in any way that and then you're eliminated or close to that that's that's where i have it. i, I mind player elimination i think i think it's an outdated thing, you know. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, for unless sure. unless it's like a really, really, really quick game, you know. Right. So yeah, absolutely. I get a little impatient too with games like that where everyone's or like, what's the one Resistance? I think it is. Yeah, you hate that game too. <sighs> Resistance everyone's is like, just an excuse to yell at your friends. That That's is all it much. is. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> oh my so, gosh, so we played so it at like Christmas or something. I don't know. Everyone was just screaming at each other, and I'm like. I'm gonna go get some more eggnog. I play that, <laughs> ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I play that game with the same tone every single time, no matter mm-hmm. what. And so, like, so then, then that saved me a lot of occasions too, because it's like, well, oh, he's doing this. I'm like, I do that every single I, game. I will you guys tell you, no, I do that. Every I know this game. man. I know him well. I can never read him in that game. <laughs> wow. Or games like that, I cannot. I cannot. Have you Have you played a Deception Murder at Hong Kong? Yeah. I like that one a lot. I think that that's. I still haven't found a social deduction game that beats that one. I just it's worked so good in so many situations for me. Yeah, that's and a good it, one. It's worked with brand new people. I've taken it to yeah. nights where there's like eight, nine people. You know, with the expansion, you can you can ramp up the player count and it still plays quite well with the um, what's it called? I forgot what the expansion's called for that, but <clears throat> I, don't know. I get a little disturbed at like the gore behind some of the things the things oh, you really? kind of got to talk about and like just the way somebody got no he got killed. stabbed with a with a broken he doesn't care and, i'm just uh... like ow but <laughs> it's it's definitely a good game i can see that it is it's not my favorite but for, like for social deduction yeah it's, it's like my it's probably my favorite it's social probably i just i just game. love being the uh, forensic scientist and putting out the, the clues or whatever oh uh, that's my favorite that's, part i was yeah i was a forensic scientist on like i think the third game that i played i definitely preferred that mm-hmm. um out of all the different players it just is so satisfying when like you survey the mm-hmm. table and you're like dun 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 and like especially <laughs> if they like figure it out quick you're just like yes yeah so, yep. so. definitely yeah definitely that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're we're at the one hour mark, so okay. uh, yeah. I wanted to uh, give you guys a chance to tell people about kind of like the stuff you guys have been working on. I know you guys, um, uh, you guys are gonna have your vlog coming up on the channel for the Dice Tower. Yes. Yeah. So exciting. And... Uh, yeah. So we're gonna s- actually start doing some reviews here and there. I think for Dice Tower in general. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't know if we could talk about that, but that's Shh. what we're gonna do. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Shh. I don't know. But um, but also, uh, you guys make sure to check out because y'all do board game breakfast. You said you try to do it like almost all the time, basically. So yeah, yeah, we try to, and and we've been getting better again about it. Well, basically, <laughs> what we found that we have to do is like make a couple of videos at a time. So like we'll do one video and like wardrobe change and I'll like switch my shirt out and then come mm. back and like just do the you know, just boom boom boom. That's like yeah, the we'll way like that is the way to do sometimes. it. And he edits everything. Like oh, I would awesome. love to take that long. help you I mean, out. With it that. takes me less than an hour to, to edit a a breakfast video. Yeah. Pro- so that's kinda how we do it for like consistency. 30, minutes, you know, now. we plan out what we need for what amount of time and if we're gonna be gone and we know something's coming up, whatever. 
Thanking so the we'll picture of the day takes the longest. I'm actually getting <laughs> fairly thin on pictures. I know, of right? The day we gotta go this point. travel or yeah, something. Yeah, we need to go on another trip. We need to go on like a cruise or something. <laughs> 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 gotta do something. Um, That's and awesome. then what else do we do? We do um, live play Mondays, except for oh, tonight because yeah. yeah. we're with you. But we'll do that where we just literally set up a camera like in the kitchen and tell the kids, stay away for an hour. Right. And then we'll play a game. Yeah, they're always on the screens. They, the kids always come around. They're like, <laughs> you can hear them get in the fridge and stuff right. like that. <laughs> I'm like, life just happens here, yeah. okay? Yeah. Get out of the fridge. Day. You'll spoil your... Get out of there. You already yeah, had dinner. Right. Yeah, That's right. right. Actually, we're, we're thinking that we're finally going to pull the trigger on making like a game room, like more of a yeah. editing space or a recording space in our basement. Oh, awesome. we, have like a home, time. we have like a home theater down there now. Um but we don't use it that often. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids use it for games and stuff, and sometimes we'll have people over for like a football game. But besides that, it's like goes largely. I feel unused. like it's being wasted. And you know what? We got to get some of our games that are overtaking our children's rooms mm-hmm. down there on some shelves because that's getting ridiculous. That's getting ridiculous. But I think we're gonna make like a little so we can set up everything because it's getting annoying to <clears throat> have to set up equipment every single time. Yeah, you do any that's recording. a lot. Because you know our house, like it's we don't have that much space, and so mm-hmm. when we do our recording and stuff. We're like he's like clamping tripods onto like the wall and like there's like divots in the wall going up from where we had to mount the camera. It's crazy. Oh man, we didn't even talk about 3D printing. You had to like 3D oh, print all the different stuff. So 3D printing. Ah, <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I figure I, fi- I figure like once I have a bunch of different guests on, I'll cycle back through people and all the yeah, different yeah. stuff. And I mean, you know. Randy, whenever we meet up at different conventions and things, you can always come on my uh, printed pieces segment and talk about it. There you go. I'll just crash yeah. every single guess one of you them guys now. are besties now because of that. Hi. <laughs> now, if only I could get him to like thematic games. I Trickets. honestly, I actually have thought that a few times. I'm like, man, I really wish I did some like miniature games because I could really print a lot of stuff then. Yeah, I know, right? I tried getting into painting a few times and just I don't I, never. I paint well, I think. Oh I yeah, think you I do. Well. It's just. We never I just don't play really games like with them, so like yeah. I just sit there and I paint it and stuff, but I, I and I like doing it when I'm actually doing it, but it takes so much effort for me to decide I'm actually going to start that project. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then usually all I can think about is I'd rather be doing something else. <laughs> not that I'm not having fun. It's just I'm like I'd rather be doing something else that I enjoy more. That's just yeah. what it comes down to. People do that. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah. It's been a blast. Everybody so make sure. Um, if you comment anything in the Dice Tower group, Ellen will will like it. I think that's how that works. <laughs> yep. There I am. I had somebody come up to me and they're like, you know what? Thank you for replying um, to comments when I post something. That's just, I, it, I, That just comes natural to me. I love to mm-hmm. talk to everybody. Oh, it's damn. fun because I feel like I feel like you've helped like grow the community over there to where I'm like oh. I'm I'm gonna commandeer and be a part of this now too. Oh, <laughs> so, thank you. That's so, so nice. So if anybody's watching this on the Dice Tower, um, I stream these live in the Dice Tower Facebook group, um, Monday nights at 9 p.m. So make sure to check that out there. Um, next week we're gonna have Jerry Hawthorne on. Uh, he's the designer of Mice and Mystics and works at Plaid Hat and does a bunch of different games design there. And hopefully, like, these are going to start going up on iTunes. I try to get it, like, submitted to iTunes, and then they have to approve it. But I think it's already on, like, Google Play and stuff like that as well. So hopefully you'll be able to listen to that there as well. Um, but, yeah, make sure to check out um, the, the Dice Tower channel to see these there. And then also check out the – if you're not a part of the Facebook group for the Dice Tower, make sure to join Ellen and all her shenanigans there as well. All of them. <laughs> all the shenanigans. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. This has been a ton of fun. We'll see everybody on the next one. Yes. Thanks, Roy. It's Thank been you, fun. Roy. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.